There are two different types of friction they were in in the reading for today. Please tell me one, at least one, of the two different types of friction. Victoria? Um, static friction. Static friction is one of the two types of friction. The other type of friction, you can tell me that one, George? Kinetic. Kinetic. Static and kinetic friction. These are the two types of friction. And the, the actual descriptions of the two types of friction are actually clear from the words. So who can define either static or kinetic friction? I'm sorry, just either static or kinetic. The word. Uh, Eric. Static means stationary. Static means stationary. It also means not changing. In this particular case, it does mean stationary. So it, that is non-moving friction. What does the word kinetic mean, Victoria? Uh, moving. It means, well, I, technically kinetic means motion. So in this particular case, we're, when we talk about kinetic friction, what we're referring to is moving friction. So those are the two different types of friction. You can clearly see when you have one versus the other, it depends on when you're moving or not moving. There are three things I want you to remember about the direction of the force of friction. The first one is that it opposes motion. The second is that it's parallel to the surface. And the last one is that it's independent of the direction of the force applied. So first off, it opposes motion. Second, it's parallel to the surface. And third, it's always independent of the direction of the force applied. So those are the things, basic things you need to know about friction. <coughs> we also need the equation. The equation for the force of friction is that it's equal to mu times force normal. That is the boxed equation for today. The force of friction equals mu times force normal. And don't worry, I'm going to spend a bunch of time talking about mu, that symbol in the middle there. Mu, the way that you draw that, it is a U with kind of a tail at the front. It is a Greek lowercase mu. And it stands for the coefficient of friction. So the force of friction equals mu, which is the coefficient of friction, times the force norm. Let's get the dimensions for the coefficient of friction. Please solve for mu, the coefficient of friction, in this equation. Ian, if you solve the force of friction equals mu times force normal for mu, what do you get? Uh, force of friction times normal. The force of friction divided by the force normal. Hannah? What are the dimensions for force? Say again? Newton. Newtons. So the force of friction is going to be in newtons, and the force normal is also going to be in newtons. What dimensions do you get, Olenek, when you divide newtons by newtons? Nothing. Correct. The, it's, you're going to get a number of 1, which has no dimensions. So notice, this is our first dimensionless number. The coefficients of friction are dimensionless. At this time, we need to look at the table in your textbook, which has all the coefficients of friction. It's on page 144, so if you please pull out your textbook. And I believe I did make a mistake and make the book optional for today, so I do apologize for those of you who did not bring it because of me. If you did not bring it because of you, I don't apologize for that. Page 144, if you don't have one, please Find someone who does so that you can look on. I want you to be able to see what's on the, the table on page 144. You can see that there are a bunch of different coefficients of friction, and it depends on what materials you're talking about. We have steel on steel, steel on con concrete, dr uh, rubber on dry concrete, things like that. And they are all different. The coefficients of friction are a, an experimentally determined value. There's no way to theoretically figure it out. You actually have to sit down and do the experiments to figure out what the coefficients of friction are. And clearly, it depends on which two materials are interacting to cause 
the different coefficients of friction. <coughs> there is a relationship between the coefficient of static friction versus the coefficient of kinetic friction for a certain set of materials, with the exception of Teflon. What is the relationship between the coefficient of static friction and the coefficient of kinetic friction? If you look at the table, you should be able to identify this relationship. For each set of materials, the coefficient of static friction relative to the coefficient of kinetic friction. Now, uh, the static friction is greater. If you'll notice, the coefficient of static friction is always greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction, with the exception of Teflon, and I'll talk about Teflon in just a minute. Now, this means that the maximum force of static friction is always greater than the force of kinetic friction. Have you ever noticed, when you're trying to move something heavy by like pushing or pulling it, that it is harder to start it moving than it is to keep it moving? You guys ever notice that? That's because the coefficient of static friction is greater than the coefficient of kinetic friction. So when you are pushing on it to get it moving, you're going against the force of static friction. But then once you get it moving, you then have kinetic friction. So it switches from the coefficient of static friction to the coefficient of kinetic friction. So it actually decreases the force of friction. That's why it's easier to keep something moving than it is to start it moving. Because the coefficient of static friction is always greater than the <coughs> coefficient of kinetic friction. As far as Teflon is concerned, Teflon actually acts a lot more like a liquid than a solid, and that's why those two, the static and kinetic, are pretty much the same for Teflon. You should also be aware of the, the kind of a, a reasonable range for your coefficients of friction. For example, looking at the table, what's a minimum value for the coefficient of friction chest? 0.01. There's actually one that's a little bit lower than that. Right next to it? 0.003. So the lowest one on your table is 0 0.003. But of course, this table doesn't include all materials. So what do you think a minimum is? 0 0.003 on here. But what about kind of with all materials? What's a value that's a minimum? I don't know if you've seen this. I, I know Adam has a hard time remembering this one. It goes up. If you want, you could use two hands. Or you could, yes, that's good too as well. Adam? Zero. Zero. Notice that the force of, if you have something that's completely frictionless, the value would be zero. Uh, so really, you can have very, very small values, but you can't have a negative value for the coefficient of friction. So that's a minimum. You can't have a negative value. What about a maximum? What's the maximum value, Sicarelli, on the table? 1.0. There's the maximum value on this table of 1. Again, that's not going to be the maximum value. There are a bunch of other materials. I would say somewhere probably between 2 and 3, maybe 2.5 is a maximum value. Under extreme circumstances, you could probably get something as high as that. So you should understand and have an understanding of what a reasonable range for coefficients of friction is, somewhere between 0 and maybe 2.5 under extreme circumstances. Good. That, those are the coefficients of friction. <coughs> now, we need to figure out how to work with this equation. Because this equation is the general equation, the one you're going to get on quizzes and final exams. But it actually works out to be three different equations. The first one is that the force of kinetic friction equals the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by force normal. For that one, all I did is substitute in the K for kinetic. So the force of kinetic friction equals mu K times force normal. For static friction, it's a little bit more complicated in that the force of static friction is less than or equal to mu s times force normal. So it's not equal to, but it's less than or equal to mu s times force normal. And this means that the maximum force of static friction, force of static friction maximum, would be equal to mu s times force normal. And we're going to spend a bit of time uh, making sure we understand that less than or equal sign in that equation. In order to do that, we're going to start with the free body diagram. We have the dictionary, which is in front of you right here. I'm going to apply a force on the dictionary. Please observe. Did you, did you see that? Did everybody see that? For some reason, I work hard up here. You guys look at me like, I ask a question. Did you see that? Yes. Good. Let us draw the free body diagram for all the forces that are acting on that object, just to review. There it is, okay. 
the dictionary. Center of mass, the free body diagram. Tristan, give me all the forces in the free body diagram. Force of gravity going down. Force normal going up. Force applied going to the right. And force of friction going to the left. What kind of friction? Static. How do you know that? Because it's not moving. It's not moving. Okay, let's talk about the direction of the force of static friction. First off, it's independent of force applied. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We can't really do that very much on this one. It is parallel to the surface. You can see that. It's parallel to the surface. The last one is that it opposes motion. But I'm, a, I'm confused by this because the dictionary wasn't moving at all. So how is it that this is a direction for the force of static friction that is opposing motion? Eric. Um. Because you apply the force in one way, but because of the static friction, it went the opposite way, so to speak, like it canceled out. So unfortunately, the it there isn't very clear to me. Why don't you try again without using it? I'm not sure what you meant by the, by the it, so I'm, I'm trying to check it. So I agree, I applied a force. The question is, why is the force of static friction to the left if this is opposing motion, but it doesn't move? Oh. You applied a force on the dictionary towards the right. To the right. But the static, so, so there's a movement, but. Nope, it doesn't move. I'm sorry. It, it, it doesn't move. We can't put movement in quotes. So I'm not going to do that. Matt? Um, you applied a force to the right with your finger. Force of the friction, um, of the force of that static friction was greater than the force you applied to it. So uh, mm -hmm. I want to be careful there. I don't want to compare one to the other just yet. We'll do we'll do a comparison in a minute. But what the force of static friction does is it prevents the object from moving. So in this particular case, it opposes motion in that it prevents the book from moving to the right. So when I push on it to the right. The book doesn't move because of the force of static friction. So in order to prevent that motion, in the absence of the force of static friction, it would move to the right. So in order to oppose that motion, the force of static friction needs to be to the left. We're going to talk about the magnitude of it in just a minute here. Elizabeth, that makes sense? Perfect. So now, I want to talk about the magnitude of the force of static friction, which will get to this less than or equal sign. So again, we've used this a lot of times. So we some of the forces in the x direction, we get that the force applied minus the force of static friction equals mass times the acceleration in the x direction. We knew it wasn't moving, so the acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero. Therefore, we get force applied minus the force of static friction is equal to zero. Therefore, the force applied equals the force of static friction. Again, it's not accelerating to the right, so there's zero acceleration. So we end up with a force applied equals the force of static friction. Now, I want to put some numbers on this so we can understand what this means. Let's say that the maximum force of static friction that this surface can apply on the book is 4 newtons. Class, what's the maximum force of static friction that the surface can apply on the book? 4, four newtons. newtons. 4 newtons. Okay. If I apply a force of 1 newton on the dictionary, class, what is the force of static friction now? One newton. We just showed that they are the same. The force applied and the force of static friction are going to have the same magnitude. Okay. I'm going to increase that force. I'm now pushing with a force of two newtons. What class is the force of static friction? Two newtons. Okay. I'm now going to increase it again. I'm now at 3.5 newtons for my force applied. What's the force of static friction? Three Good. I'm now, I'm increasing it just a little bit more. I'm increasing it. It's now at 3.9 newtons, the force of applied. What's the force of static friction? Good, I'm going to increase it, increase it just a little bit more. I'm now applying a force of 4.1 newtons class. What's the force of static friction? Zero. Let's review. What was the maximum force of static friction? Four. Four. So if I apply a force of 4.1 newtons, what happens to the dictionary? It moves. So do we have static friction anymore? No. No. Okay, so notice. When I get to the point 
where that force applied is greater than the force of static friction, the object is going to move and we no longer have static friction, we switch to kinetic friction. So the point here with this less than or equal sign with the force of static friction is that the force of static friction is going to increase or decrease, it's going to adjust itself to prevent the object from moving. That's what the less than or equal sign means. Now, let's pretend for a moment that the less than or equal sign isn't there and that it's just equal to. In other words, the force of static friction is always equal to the maximum force of static friction, which was four newtons. If the force of static friction is always equal to the maximum force of static friction, what happens if I apply a force of one newton to the dictionary? Nick? It would move toward me, right? Think about that. I would apply a force of one newton on it, but it wasn't enough, so the force of static friction causes it to move this way. Does that make any sense? No. It doesn't make any sense. The world doesn't work that way, right? Because the force of static friction adjusts to prevent the object from moving. That's what the less than or equal sign means. 